My name is McKenna Kramer. I work for a marketing agency here in Missoula called Pintler Group. Um, we're a small size agency. We work with medium sized businesses, including um, quite a few nonprofits, um, pretty much locally here in Montana. So um, excited to talk to you guys today about marketing specifically for nonprofits because I do feel like it's it's deserves its own topic. It's pretty different from marketing um, for businesses. So a um, little bit about myself. Um, I graduated from the University of Montana in 2016 with my bachelor in communication. I never took a marketing class at the university or um, got my master's in marketing or anything. I just uh, really kind of came into it accidentally after college and fell in love with it. I uh, found myself at the Humane Society of Western Montana, where I was the director of advancement for two years. Um, and so as a director of advancement, something that will probably come up a lot throughout this presentation is I was responsible for all of the fundraising as well as all of the marketing. So typically in nonprofits, you're not going to just be focusing on marketing. Um, that tends to be something that comes secondary to another role. Um, and something that maybe gets placed a little bit less value on. Um, so it kind of gets pushed to the back burner. So I'm hoping today to kind of work through some creative ways to save time on it. Um, that might be helpful if it's not your primary job. So I was at the Humane Society for a little over two years here in town. I only adopted one animal while I was there. So I did pretty well. Um, as I mentioned, I'm currently the social media manager at Pintler Group. We work with um, the Clark Fork Coalition, Boy Scouts, uh, the Montana Council, and Mountain Health Co-op, which are three nonprofits here in Montana. Um, so I do social media as well as email marketing for all of our clients. Um, and then I also am a cheer coach at the University of Montana. Um, not that we're really doing a lot right now, <laughs> but these are my two cats. I threw them in here because they're very naughty co-workers and there's a pretty good chance that they will like jump on screen or start screaming anytime so plus they're just really cute to look at um, about this presentation we're going to cover some basics we only have an hour i'm going to leave some time at the end for questions so really going through the key the key points here social media is a huge one we'll spend a little time on that business partnerships earned media email is another really big one that i feel really strongly about um, paid ads and then some kind of creative off screen marketing and another picture of my perfect cats. <laughs> okay, so social media is definitely the number one way to market your nonprofit because it's free. So that is the number one thing at a nonprofit. You're trying to save money. You've got to meet your bottom line. Um, social media is free and it's really effective. There's tons of people on there people looking at your content. So just wanna go over a couple of the basics here. Um, these are not necessarily specific to nonprofits, but very important to use consistent branding. Um, when I was doing work at the Humane Society, that was something that I was really focusing on was establishing brand colors, um, fonts if we're creating anything, any graphics or anything. It's just really important for people to be able to recognize your brand. Um, just because it's gonna create a little bit of more trust and people are gonna know right away that it's you and not um, they won't have to dig any deeper. You wanna make things as easy for people as possible, especially online. So to use consistent branding, you always wanna use your logo as your profile photo. That might seem kind of basic, but it's something that not every nonprofit around here is doing, not every business is doing. Always use your logo because when something appears in someone's newsfeed, that's the little, little picture that they're gonna see and they're gonna know it's you. Um, create a consistent tone. So if you're, um, for example, one of our clients is Betty's Divine. If you're familiar, they're like a really funky clothing shop down here on the hip strip. So our tone with them, um, whenever we're creating anything for them, is like a really fun, kind of young, funky tone. Um, whereas if we're working for um, one of our clients, that's a health insurance, we use much more professional tone. So um, kind of really think about who your organization is, what kind of um, message you're trying to get out there and how you want to portray that and then keep it consistent because people want to start to recognize your brand and feel comfortable with it um, and not make it sound like it's coming from a bunch of different people. 
Um, as I mentioned, using your brand fonts if you're creating graphics and always using your brand colors just as recognizable as you can be is always better. Uh, depending on your nonprofit, I would really recommend picking the best social channels for your follower base. So for instance, if you um, are uh, Missoula Aging Services, I probably would not recommend being on Twitter. There's not a lot of um, older people on Twitter. It's probably not the best platform to use. You might be wasting your time on there. Uh, if you have really beautiful visuals, like if uh, for Clark Fork Coalition, for example, a lot of our content is like beautiful photos of the river and of our surrounding area. Definitely great for Instagram. Um, and Facebook is pretty much just a general one that is great across the board. Definitely get on Facebook. Um, LinkedIn, much more professional. We only use that for some clients. It doesn't really make sense for um, a clothing store to be on LinkedIn necessarily. Complete your profile. Again, this seems really basic, but it's something that not a lot of people do. You just have to do it one time. It's really simple. Um, get an updated bio in there, put your website link, make sure it's updated and correct to where you want it to go, uh, put your hours that you're open. It just is, it's a little thing. It seems like a really easy thing to do, but it's just one time and people will really look there. Like you, you want people to go to your website and you hope they do, but half the time they're just going to check your Facebook page. So make sure all of that information is up to date. Um, one thing that I just, I was recently at a marketing conference virtually um, for 2020 trends and 2021 predictions. And this was a really big thing we touched on was engaging with followers. Um, this year has been really, obviously really different and weird and we don't have to dwell on how <laughs> difficult it's been, but uh, people are spending a lot of time online and they're starting to get to know brands in a different way. Um, and they want that interaction with the brand. So keeping an eye on your comments and replying to comments or seeing where um, people are tagging you and stuff and responding in that way or checking your messages and just kind of having that personal touch with people is especially important in nonprofits because those people, they start to trust you. They start to feel like they know you. They might start to give you money, which is great. Um, so keep an eye on your notifications. I would set aside time, a little bit of time every morning just to check on that. Um, and it, it really does make a big difference. Uh, I wouldn't necessarily get notifications on your phone through all all hours of the day because that's going to get really tough really quick but set a time side every day to check on those um, limit your publishing access this was a, a struggle point for me at the humane society so many people had access to our facebook page because when a lost pet came in they would post a pet immediately and so that can be really challenging because as we talked about like you really want to have a consistent tone when there's a bunch of different people in there typing a bunch of different things like it just sounds really jumbled and all over the place and at nonprofits specifically it's happening more and more now that people are um, organizations are hiring marketing positions but in the past it's just been kind of whoever has time to throw something up um, so when I got into that Facebook page there was like 12 people with access to post content and that's just it's too much it's all over the place so just make sure you are the one person or maybe two people that's allowed to post um, apply for a Facebook donate button. You want to give people as many <laughs> ways as possible to donate to your organization. You do have to apply for a donate button. It's not that hard. You just have to prove that you're a 501c3. Unfortunately, um, Facebook does not let you know much donor information. So there's not a great way to follow up uh, with donors or add them into your system. But very important to have that on your page because you just want to give all the opportunities. Uh, like the next point says, always give the opportunity to donate. Um, okay, so as we talked about, social media is probably not going to be your only job. Marketing might not be your only job. And even if it is, there's um, high chances that you get pulled into other stuff throughout the day. So you really want to focus on making every post count. This was something that I really focused on. And most of my examples are from the Humane Society because that's where most of my experience is from. So hopefully you guys are all animal people but um, setting an intention for every post. So what am I trying to do with this? Is this a waste of time? Is this gonna bring value to people's news feeds? Um, and understand your audience and why they follow you. They're following you because they like your organization. So show them things that you think they might care about. Um, so some types of posts that are really common for nonprofits would be to raise awareness about your cause, um, drive your membership, recruit volunteers. Ours was a big one was always like, please come adopt. <laughs> Um, and always, always, you want to have a couple donate ones in there. So I would really um, take inventory on 
the attention of each post that you put up and then kind of make sure you have a good balance. Like you might have four or five different post types that make sense for your organization. Make sure you're kind of balancing those. So you're not always asking for money or you are sometimes asking for money um, just to keep everything kind of interesting and fresh on people's news feeds. So these are a couple of examples from the Humane Society. So this one, Cat Cuddlers Needed, that is obviously a call for volunteers. Um, monthly donors on the second one here. Uh, um, and then this third one is for event registration for the Canine Classic. So these are just a couple of examples of different intentions on posts. Okay, so a key thing for nonprofit marketing is activation. So your followers, they care about your mission or they wouldn't be following you. Um, they care about your organization, at least at a very surface level. So the next step is to activate participation. So people maybe know about your organization and they appreciate your mission, but you want them to actually do something about it. So activation can be um, coming into volunteer, signing your petition, coming to some of your events, if you can ever do events again. Um, maybe shop, if you have an online store, maybe shopping is, um, is the call to action. Donating is always, always a great call to action. So it's kind of key to try to get people from knowing about your organization to being involved in your organization. So for example, um, we work with the Clark Fork Coalition specifically, um, and they are a nonprofit here in Missoula that focuses on our groundwater and our river water, um, creating the, the river through Missoula used to be a big mess. They helped clean it up and they wanna keep it really clean and safe for um, our community. So the campaign we were hired for is called Clean Up Smurf at Stone. So this was, well, it is currently a site just west of town that was an old paper mill that has been abandoned and it's just leaking a bunch of toxic nastiness into the groundwater and into the Clark Fork River. It's really, really awful. And so the goal of this campaign, which we've been executing for six months, um, is to just clean it up, like get the EPA to take action and clean it up. So this is an example of a post with the intention of activation. The goal is to sign our petition. Really clear copy here, really engaging photo, just the fish in the Clark Fork are not safe to eat. That should concern you, please sign our petition. And we had a great response on this, it's really clear. It's always important to just keep your intentions very, very clear um, and make it as easy for people as possible to engage with you and to activate. These are a couple of more examples. Um, this here on the left was a shareable badge. Super, super highly recommend this. So this, we encourage people to share on their own timelines that they had signed our petition. It's not easy, not hard to design. Like we have a designer on staff, but you can make something really easily and people are sharing it on their page and they're showing that to all of their followers. It's one post for you. And then it's going to all of these people that don't necessarily follow you. So really highly recommend shareable badges because it's just super low lift um, with a big payoff, which is great when you don't have a ton of time to dedicate to this. Um, and then we created this video with a call to action. And we'll talk a little more about video later because not everyone obviously has the resources to make things like this, but this is just a really short clip. Like that is a very, very clear um, message that it's bad, we need to clean it up right away. And then this had a button that was um, sign our petition. So it's just really clear messages with action items to help people activate onto, um, with your organization. Another great tool, that's something that's come up um, for 2021 predictions and 2020 trends is community groups. Um, I'm sure you're all very familiar with what these are. You're probably in like a hundred Facebook groups, very, very um, relevant to nonprofit organizations. Creating Facebook groups and LinkedIn groups even, depending on your organization, is a great way to engage with people and to keep people really kind of thinking about your, your brand and your mission. So for example, I created this Facebook page called HSWM Alumni. And so this was for people who had adopted pets from our shelter. Um, anyone that adopted could join this group. 
Uh, I started this like a year ago and it has almost 300 members so far. Um, and I, I don't know how actively they push this anymore, but it's like a great, great spot for adopters to share photos and they still feel really involved with your organization. Um, and then it's a wonderful place for you to post um, upcoming events because you know all these people are interested or have supported your organization in some way or another. Um, so pushing your events in these places or if you have um, fundraising campaigns, you can always post them in here. I would be wary about doing that too often in here because people are in the group to connect with other people that are involved in your organization. But definitely if you have a year end appeal coming up, putting that in there or like, hey, sign up for our email list, pop it in there because all of these people are interested in your organization and it's just one really easy, quick place um, to go to reach a bunch of people that you know are interested. So definitely recommend creating community groups. Um, a couple examples, you could create a group for your volunteers, which is just a really easy way um, to reach them, your customers. So in our case, that would be adopters. Um, Honestly, like any, any way that people are engaging, you can create a group for those people. And it's just a really nice way for them to just be reminded and um, actively engage, even not directly with your organization, but about your organization. Um, and so in these groups, you can encourage discussion. So you can post, you know, questions like, hey, how are your pet, like, how are your pets helping you while you're working from home? And then people are always excited to, you know, talk about that. So creating um, discussion questions or putting polls um, or asking for feedback is a great way to engage people on these platforms as well. Okay, <laughs> this is a really important one, huge takeaway, probably takeaway number one um, for nonprofits specifically is posting happy content versus posting sad content. So um, I've been to several nonprofit marketing conferences. And this is always a very, very key point. So I'll break down kind of the difference and then I'll show you some examples. So posting very frequent sad cries for help. So you've seen um, probably like the, the ASPCA ad that's like Sarah McLaughlin and it's like a beat up puppy and <laughs> it's really sad. Um, and it definitely, tugs on your heartstrings and it might compel you to make a donation because it's really, um, it's compelling and it's sad and you wanna help that like really distressed puppy, but it doesn't really foster long-term support. It's a great for a one-time donation. It's not great for creating a donor base of people that will continually support you. So I'm not saying that ASPCA doesn't do a good job at fundraising because they definitely really do. Um, but I think those ads probably go out to a, the whole nation and then their core group probably gets a lot different, um, stuff, but I would really try to stray away from just posting really like sad cries for help on your social media or anywhere. It's just really, um, it tugs on the heartstrings and might tug on the purse strings once, maybe twice, but over and over again, it just looks like it's well, it, it's just a bummer, honestly, but it also just doesn't really look like you're making any progress. Um, so the alternative to that would be posting continuous positive stories and posts. So for example, um, and instead of posting the really sad beat up puppy, maybe you post like, look how, look at all these adoptions that we've had this year. Um, look how look how we've cleaned up the Clark Fork River and like look at all this progress we've made. It establishes your organization as like a meaningful part of the community. It's not, um, not that you're there to like just clean up horrible messes, but that you're actually making positive improvements. It's very, very important and it really compels people to support you more. Um, it leads to confident donors because they know you're actually getting something done. Um, if you're giving to that sad ad, you give to it once, you give to it twice, you give to it three times and you keep seeing it, it really feels like, well, what are, what are my donation dollars going towards? Like, or my volunteer hours, um, like, am I really even making a difference with this? And you might try to find an organization that's like proving that they're truly impacting the community. So really, really these positive stories, um, they, they go further. So you might get less donations on a single post, 
but you'll get more donations and more um, more continuous donors over the course of time, just because they're going to feel confident that their money is going towards something that's actually making a difference. So this is my my SPCA example. Um, this is for immediate need, and I'm not saying you can never post things like this. Like if something happens and you really need money fast and you need to post something like this, by all means, like. I've definitely done this before when we were in urgent need of something and it's okay to do every now and then when you really need it, but just stray away from doing it all the time and really try to focus on the positive stories. So this is definitely a sad one, cold, fearful, lonely, puppy mill dogs need you today. Like, oh my gosh, your heart is probably like just so sad for this dog. It's very compelling. You might donate right now. Um, another example, save the children. I mean, this is horrible. Like you don't feel good looking at this. It's effective. Like I want to give money, but it's seeing this over and over again is not going to last. Here's an example from um, the Humane Society here. This is a happy report of progress that we made throughout the year thanks to supporters. So we had, had um, almost 1,300 adoptions in the year, I think, 2018. Um, this is really positive. Like if I was giving money to this organization and I see, holy crap, they found homes for 1300 pets, like my money did something. Um, it's super important. It makes you feel really good. It makes you want to give again. Another example, um, we had a really great adoption week during Christmas, one week, 46 pets, like all of these smiling faces and all these pets that have found homes. Like that makes you just feel good. And your organization is doing really good work and you should make people feel good about it. Um, especially make people feel good about contributing. <laughs> volunteer hours or donation dollars. Um, okay, so kind of shifting away from social media now. Um, and if anyone has any questions, we should have plenty of time at the end. So please hold on to those or pop them in the chat so you don't forget. Um, business partnerships are huge for nonprofits. It, this kind of looks like um, a situation where you find a business in town that aligns with your mission and you can um, work together on a project or on an event. Um, so for example, with the Humane Society, we obviously we're looking for people that are pet people. So um, one of the car dealerships in town, Honda, they love when dogs come visit their shop. Like you're allowed to bring your dog in, bring your dog for a test drive. They like to market their cars as being like family friendly and pet friendly. So we found this as an opportunity to say, Hey, we know how much you love dogs. We have a lot of dogs. Like, do you want to maybe do something together? If you find a great business like that, that's willing to give you money. Like that's just a huge win-win because it makes that business look really good for donating and like helping out your cause you mentioned them on your page and all of your followers are seeing them. They message you, they mention you on their page. So all of their followers are seeing you. It's a win-win and usually you charge for it. <laughs> so you get a donation out of it. So you're getting money, you're getting exposure. They're looking really good in the community and they're getting exposure. It's just like a win-win all around. Um, it's great, easy marketing. And a lot of businesses are going to want to help. Like businesses want to be involved in their community, at least the good ones that you want to work with do. So I really recommend creating a formal business partnership program. This is something that um, I created that I found very, very helpful. So it was like a one sheet that we sent around to a ton of businesses in town. Do not be afraid to ask. Like you're not going to get anything if you don't ask. And the worst thing that happens is people say no. So I created a one sheet that just said like, hey, we have pets, we can bring puppies to your place of work, um, people can play with them, or we can do an adoption event, or you can come volunteer here. Um, and it's just, it's, we just need a donation of $500 or $1,000. Um, and we'll post about it and we'll put out a press release about it. And um, maybe we'll go live on Facebook. And so you'll get all this exposure. We have this many followers, um, like, just think about it, you know, like just kind of a one touch and so many people got back to us. So I really recommend putting something formal together and that's gonna help um, for businesses that don't necessarily feel like um, giving you a donation for your services because your 
your time is valuable and your resources are valuable and you need to be getting um, something out of it. So I definitely recommend having something written down. Like if someone tries to approach you and offer a business partnership that is um, not going to benefit you, you can pull out the one sheet and just say, hey, actually, like we have this formal program in place and we would love to work with you if you're willing to like meet us halfway. So one time you put that together one time and it's going to um, it's going to pay off. <laughs> So here's a couple of examples, get creative and be assertive. So like, we're not just looking at um, dog groomers in town. We're looking at, oh, dogs like to go get whipped cream from the coffee place. Maybe they'll partner with us. Um, roamers point us tires, like they're a tire shop, but they let dogs in their lobby. So we reached out to them. They gave us $3,000. Um, Black cat bake shop, that was an easy one just because they have cat in the name. So they were like, okay, well, We'll donate, um, we'll donate from every carrot cupcake. And we like did half off black cats for that month. Um, so you can find ways to be creative so that the business doesn't just have to write you a check outright in your business program. Um, in your partnership program, you can come up with ways like, hey, if you donate 40% of every cupcake or however much of every coffee sale um, to us on Tuesdays this month or something, just come up with like some really fun creative ways um, so they don't just necessarily write you a check or they can collect donations for you from their customers as well and then pull that into the total that you're acquiring for your partnership program. These are, um, that's my cat in the black cat. <laughs> okay, so moving on to earned media and PR. Earned media is a huge thing to take advantage of. Um, when you're a nonprofit, you don't usually typically get earned media if you are a business. Um, earned media is anything like news stories. Um, if the newspaper comes out and does something about you, anything like that, always, always do it. So radio spots, blog articles. Um, we were in like a couple magazine articles, like anything along those lines, always take advantage of it because it's free. Usually they're doing a lot of the legwork and you just get more exposure. Um, people generally, especially now, like they need good news in their lives and the news outlets want to share that. So you've been doing really great things. Like your nonprofit is obviously has a mission. Probably a lot of people care about it. It's a great way for the news to kind of, um, have a light story in their news, um, in their program, because a lot of it is not super light and fun. So I would say um, to save time, just create a really simple press release template that you can just plug info into. So that just looks like um, you can Google press release template and something will come up and put, pop your logo on the top, pop in the date, write a little bit about what's going on and send it out um, to all of your outlets. If they pick it up or not, like if you have a template in place, it'll be really easy to do. It won't take you any time and like hopefully you, you get picked up. And then set up a Google alert about your organization. <laughs> I 100% recommend doing that. Like write that down because it's happened to me so many times where news articles have come out that about our organization that we didn't see or didn't know were coming out. Um, and you always just want to be on top of that. And also it just makes great content for your social channels that you didn't really have to do anything for. So set up an alert because you never know um, when they're going to pick something up, even just off your social media or something. Um, so my advice is to send a press release for everything. So this could be for big events that you have coming up, any feel good stories. Like we had a, a dog that was at the shelter for like eight months and he got adopted and we were like, let's tell the news about it. Maybe they'll do a little story about it. Um, volunteer highlights. We had one of our like young volunteers was baking dog biscuits for our pets and we sent it into the news and she was on like a couple different news stations about it. Um, if you have any needs, like anything at all, if you need, if you're doing like a canned food drive or if you need blankets or anything like that, you can always just send that to the news station. They might, they might just say one word about it at the end of broadcast, but that's, that's good exposure. And it probably took you like 30 seconds to send that. Um, business partnerships, that's a big selling point for the businesses that want to work with you. Um, so just always send those over like, Hey, we're working with, um, 
we're working with the tire shop this month to raise money and people should swing by and get their tires changed or whatever. Um, and at, like anything you can think of to send is great. So these are a few examples. The Missoulian, our local newspaper, this was a new program that we created out and about Missoula gives dogs experience in real situations. So this was a field trip program where people could just like borrow dogs for the afternoon and walk them around. Still a program, it's really great, highly recommend it. <laughs> um, and it was, it got picked up. We're like, hey, maybe we'll let people know we're doing this. And it was in the newspaper. Um, NBC Montana shared about some ASPCA rescue dogs that we got. Um, I mean, that was just a feel good story, really easy to do. And then this one is actually a great example of how this can really explode. So Pearl, this little beagle on the right, she came into us, she weighed um, 50 pounds, which was just way, way too much for a little beagle. Um, so she went on this weight loss journey and she was like swimming, trying to lose weight. She could barely walk. And she ended up losing 20 pounds um, and we made her her own Instagram profile and we sent it out. It was all over the local news here, but it got picked up by People Magazine somehow. And so she was in People Magazine um, in their January issue for like New Year's resolutions for weight loss because she lost half her body weight. Um, and then from there, she, they actually flew her and her owner out who worked at the shelter to Good Morning America. And she was on Good Morning America. Um, for being an inspiration. So you never know when something like that is gonna come up and like really just launch your marketing like into the next dimension. Like it's huge for our small organization here in Missoula, Montana to be on Good Morning America and in People Magazine. So always, always, always send press releases. Here's another example. This was one of my very favorite campaigns we did. It was called the Spicy Cat Challenge. And so we found a problem. Um, we had all of these long-term resident cats that were not getting adopted. And we realized it was because they were all kind of mean. <laughs> um, we're like, okay, we have all these kind of bratty cats here. What are we gonna do about it? So we really put our heads together and came up with, you know, let's embrace it. Let's embrace that they're like sassy, spicy cats. Um, so we put together this campaign and we're like, okay, who can we reach out to? We found a hot sauce uh, manufacturer in town called Arthur Wayne. And we're like, hey, we've got a bunch of spicy cats. Would you be interested in partnering up and like helping us promote these cats so that hopefully they get adopted? And he was like, that is the most insane thing I've ever heard. Like, of course I wanna do that. This is so weird. And it was just ended up being a great campaign. Um, so we just wrote up some, co some copy and sent photos out to the news outlets. Like they didn't have to come to the shelter we took these photos and it was on um, color eight is on a couple different stations, but all of the cats got adopted. Um, so I just recommend if you have something like this, just embrace a problem really creatively and try to just market it as kind of a positive. Like people were excited to come and be like, oh, sassy cat, like I can handle a sassy cat. Um, and, and also this bottom point here that we just wrote copy and sent photos, I would just make it um, easy for people to share for news outlets to share. So, um, you know, just writing a few sentences, these articles on the news websites are never very long. So just write a few sentences, maybe a couple paragraphs and send it over with a photo. And that's all it really takes. Like they will just publish, like that was, it was so easy, so low lift and it tons of people saw it. And then all the cats got adopted. These are just some cute pictures from it. <laughs> so we um, did photos with the hot sauce and then everyone that adopted a cat got to take a bottle of hot sauce home with them. So um, that was, it was just fun for Arthur Wayne. Um, he donated the hot sauce and then he donated some money as well. And we shared him on our page. He shared us on his page. Great cross promotion, great business partnership um, and just really cute content for your social media as well. Okay, email is one of my favorite topics. I do a lot of email at Pentler Group now. That's one of my main verticals. Um, according to smarterhq.com, 72% of consumers only engage with marketing messages that are customized to their specific interest. So that ties into email because of what we really wanna focus on is segmentation. So that means um, not just sending blanket emails to everyone on your email list, which you can do sometimes, like if you're announcing an upcoming event and you wanna hit every single person on your email list, that's great. 
But what I really recommend um, for your more frequent emails is to break down your contact list by volunteers, donors, customers, adopters, whatever um, makes sense for your organization. My cats, I'm sorry. Um, and that's gonna just help you create specific content that is gonna be applicable to different people. So um, if you break, if you have a volunteer list, you can email them about upcoming volunteer opportunities, donor list, tell them feel good stories. Um, most platforms for your email, we use MailChimp. It's, I love MailChimp. I've used Constant Contact as well. They really easily allow you to duplicate your emails to make quick little changes. So if you, want, if you send out a monthly newsletter and you want to segment it to volunteers and donors, you can pop in and just, you can create a, an email template and just pop in and change little things, just duplicate it. It's very easy to do. Um, anytime you do email, remember to test it out on mobile because like most people are just going to look at this on their phone. And I've seen it so many times where it looks great on your desktop and it looks not great on your phone. So make sure you send a test email to yourself um, and check it on your phone. And then just as an aside, anytime you're at an event or you have a donation page or um, people are in your building um, volunteering, always collect email addresses. It's great to build your email list. Um, it's an easy way to connect with people. Uh, and so you just always want to make sure you're getting that information. Email automation. So this is um, kind of one of those time-saving tips to set yourself up for success when you don't have a ton of time. Automations are, you've, I'm sure you've received hundreds of email automations. They're just a series of emails that you automatically get sent when people join your contact list. So that means um, as soon as someone signs up for your email list, they might, you probably experienced this. Like if you purchased something from a store online and then you got a thank you email and then a week later, you got an email that was like, hey, here's 10% off, come shop again. And then six days later, it's like, don't forget, you have 10% off. And you might get like four or five emails in a series like that spread out over maybe two months or so. Um, that's an email automation. And if you're using one of these platforms, it's really easy to set up. Um, so you set it up one time and then you kind of just forget about it. So it might take you a little bit of time to get together what you really want, um, but it's a one-time commitment <laughs> to do that. And then it just is gonna work for you. So you can set up a new donor series. Um, as soon as someone donates, they get an email and then they're set up in an email series and you're just giving them great updates about the organization um, or a volunteer info series. Uh, you can showcase your less popular programs, keep your, or oh, this is the greatest thing about it. So it just keeps your organization in mind um, for people. So like they might send out over a period, you could set it up for a six month period and it sends like one a month or one every three weeks. It's just keeping your organization top of mind for people, <laughs> um, especially for donors. Like as, if donors give to you for the first time and then they get put into an email series, that is just fantastic for um just reminding them about you and all the good work you're doing. And then at the bottom, always, always add a donation button. Like you wanna make it as easy as possible for people to give you money. So just go ahead and pop that in there. Um, make it easy. <laughs> okay, so paid ads on a budget. Um, it's probably not super likely that you have a huge marketing budget um, or a lot of time to set up and monitor ads. It can be pretty time consuming. Um, so a recommendation that I have is to boost your posts and events. So if you create a really great post that you think could be versatile and could reach people that don't really know that much about your organization and it's just an organic post on your page, put some money behind it, um, share it out to people. You can set parameters. Like I wanna show this post to people within 25 miles of Missoula or people within a certain age range or um, that have certain interests. Um, posting your organic or boosting your organic posts is a time saver. It's really easy to do. It's a lot easier than going into Facebook ads and creating a separate ad um, or going into Google ads. Like that's a whole different thing. I just, for a nonprofit, when you don't have a ton of time, 
you don't have a ton of money, just boost your post. It's really effective um, and it helps you gain new followers as well. And boost your upcoming events, um, even if people aren't necessarily aligned with your mission and like maybe they don't care about um, pets, like maybe they're not pet people or they're like allergic to dogs, but you have a really fun event coming up that might still interest them, definitely boost those um, and just try to get as many people around as possible. Um, it helps you, yeah, it helps you reach out of your existing follower base. So um, target people that have relevant interests. So one of our events is the canine classic. It's a foot race that you can do with your dog. And so we sent a little bit of money to target people that liked dogs, that liked running um, and that lived in Western Montana. So that's just an easy way to target people. We put a little bit of money behind it. And it was just, um, it was a great way to just reach new people that have never come to the event before. Off-screen marketing, I focus mainly on digital marketing in my current role, but there were a few times when off-screen marketing came into play. I would say find easy things for businesses to implement. So that can be, you know, can I hang up a flyer on your bulletin board? Or one of our more creative ones was um, coasters because people in Missoula just like love to go to the brewery and hang out and drink beer. So we thought, why not try to reach people in a different place instead of online? We'll put little coasters with this adoptable dog and they just had our website on the backside. Um, super fun, really cheap to do. Um, and it's just a different way to reach people. And they, I would say they really complement your digital campaigns. So you don't just want to go out and put flyers um, or just go out and put coasters out. You want to have a digital presence to go along with that as well. So um, like, for example, if you put out a flyer for an event that you have, have a Facebook event already created for that and have information on your website about that. And so when people see that flyer and they're interested in it, the odds are high, they're just gonna like look at it and then Google it later. <laughs> and so make sure there's something online that will pop up when they try to do that. Um, and, oh yeah, so mail, uh, Mail is a really effective way to reach your older donor base as well. <laughs> um, sending information in the mail with a remit envelope so that they can mail back checks. Um, a lot of people like to do this, but it's just an, an effective way to reach your um, older base that might not necessarily be spending a lot of time on social media as well or online. <laughs> okay, so these are just a couple of um, quick tips before I get to some questions. I really recommend planning ahead, especially on your social media and just throughout your entire calendar. So at the beginning of the year, we kind of sat down with just a big calendar for the entire year. And we thought, okay, we know we have certain events at certain times, let's block those out. We'll probably focus on those um, on social media around that time. And we know we have a year end giving campaign. So that's gonna take over social media in December, um, we have adoption events, whatever. So look at the grand scheme of your year or even of your next couple months. Um, and then look in where you can kind of pop in some fun, different creative campaign ideas that you might have. Like you might notice some dead time in your calendar and you have a great fun um, social campaign that's not necessarily really urgent, pop that in then and really try to plan your calendar out in advance um, just to make sure you are not like overloading a bunch of things or having dead time. Um, schedule your content out a week or more in advance. And so this is easy to do if you have a platform to, <laughs> to use, um, if you have that resource, which there are some really cheap and free ones. Um, or on Facebook, you can schedule posts out in advance. You can't really do it for Instagram, which is a bummer, but um, if you can, schedule them out intentionally so that um, you're not waking up in the morning like, hmm, what should I post on Facebook today? I don't know. Um, you have a plan in place that makes sense with the content throughout the week or throughout the month so that it's not just totally random. Um, plus it'll save you time in the long run to just sit down one day and just like really put a lot of thought into your content for the next upcoming period of time. And then, um, you don't really have to worry about it. Like obviously things will come up that you'll want to pop in there and that's great, but you won't have to spend time every day. Like, Hmm, what should I post today? You can spend time on more creative ideas. 
Um, this kind of goes back to that Facebook badge for the Clark Fork Coalition, create shareable content with a call to action. Shareable content is just so easy um, to reach people. Like it's, great. it's a great way. People are on Facebook sharing stuff all the time or they're on Instagram sharing things to their story. Create something really cute that people want to put on their page that makes them look great for supporting your organization. Um, and that's just going to spread the word to a bunch of people that probably aren't following you yet. Um, and then repurpose content. This is a huge time-saving technique. You're probably writing appeal letters. Um, you probably have brochures. We had a ton of adoption photos. You're doing um, direct mail campaigns or flyers or event invitations. Um, anything like that, repurpose it and post it on your social media. It's so easy to do. Highly recommend. It saves a ton of time because you've already probably created this um, for a different purpose. So just pop it on. And then um, another great thing to do is if you are actively engaging with your followers on social media and they're tagging you and stuff, share that onto um, your profile because that is gonna save you some time and it's gonna make that person feel like um, they're really involved with your organization, which is great. It's so just real life examples too. Um, leverage your resources. So as a nonprofit, you have a board of directors they are probably pretty um, pretty excited to get engaged in different ways and they're probably pretty well connected in your community. So if there's any way you can leverage them to help you out, maybe they know people at news stations or um, they know a videographer that might be willing to donate some time, leverage your board as well as your committees. Um, I think it's pretty standard that nonprofits have a marketing committee Use them however possible, you know, um, they're there to help you. Student interns, <laughs> this is a great way um, to get some help, especially if you're really busy. We always had a student intern um, helping us out on social media. So we did not, we don't really believe in unpaid internships. We would always pay at least a little bit, but it's great experience for students. Um, and it's great to have the extra help. And there's, we always had a ton of people apply. So that's a great um, resource if you have a university um, near you. Also university classes. We had, I think we even sent out um, some information to the media arts program at the U. And we were like, hey, we really need some video footage if any of your students need to work on projects. Um, and they're, they're, I mean, they're in the classes, they know what they're doing and they created really, really great content for us and it cost us nothing. Um, they got class credit for it, you know, they got a great grade and we got stuff that we could share, um, which is just fantastic. <laughs> also businesses, like there are a ton of digital marketing agencies or um, like video agencies or photographers in your community that are probably willing to donate an hour of their time to help you out. So we always had different media agencies coming and creating videos for us. Um, we're taking photos for our website. Um, and it's just, I mean, you can post about it on your page like, wow, well, um, Warm Springs Productions was at our shelter today helping us out with the project. Thank you so much. And that's different than a business partnership because um, they're really just donating their time and their work rather than um, you like you putting in a lot of effort and resources to meet them at their place or something like that. And then associations, there's a ton here in Missoula because we have so many nonprofits in our town, uh, but there's probably some wherever you are as well. There's um, here, there's like the Western Montana Fundraisers Association, uh, Missoula Nonprofit Network, a ton, a ton of different ones that I really recommend just getting involved with and they always have little trainings um, that are super helpful. Um, and it's just a great way to network with people. So just leverage all of your resources because they're probably a little bit limited. That being said, um, cheap and free platforms, really, really important. Canva is a design platform you may be familiar with. It is free for nonprofits. It is super, super easy to use um, to create graphics for your social media channels or for your website or for your emails. Like it's incredibly simple, user-friendly and it, they have templates already in there for you to use. So highly recommend using Canva. Um, I think anyone can use it for free, but as a nonprofit, you get like the full suite for free. MailChimp is my recommendation for email 
that's free up to a certain extent or else it's like pretty affordable depending on how big your email list is. Buffer is one of those social media scheduling platforms where you can schedule out as far in advance on um, Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, whatever, Twitter, whatever platforms you're on, they'll, you can schedule it out in there. Um, I believe it's free for nonprofits, but if it's not, it's pretty cheap. If you are feeling really ambitious and want to dive into Google ads, there isn't, Google has grants for nonprofits for Google ads. That is going to be a bit more time consuming. They're pretty tricky. So you might need a little bit of training on that. Um, but look into that for sure, because that's just more free exposure. G Suite for nonprofits is a great tool. Um, and then the YouTube nonprofit program is also a free tool if you're trying to um, get some video advertisement on YouTube. Cool, so I think that's it. Um, I think we have some time left for questions. I see a lot of comments that I have not looked at. So let me just check out in here. And if anyone, I don't know if you're all muted or um, please feel free to unmute yourself and ask a question. I'm gonna stop sharing my screen. Yeah, thank you for that excellent presentation, McKenna. We, we have had questions coming in the chat throughout. So maybe if you want to just browse over those and answer a couple of them and people can feel free to keep tossing them in. Awesome, yeah, sounds good. Um, it looks like a question came in about student interns. What other ways can student interns help without getting too much into the internal workings of the organization, which may not be appropriate? Um, is it okay to get student interns from time to time rather than a regular gig? Yes, definitely. So um, we've had kind of a variety of student intern programs. Uh, we had full semester ones. Uh, we had interns just for certain events. Like we have a really big event on, uh, on the university campus that was like 400 people and we really just needed help for this one event planning. Um, and they can help in ways that aren't, like they don't necessarily need to see your donor list or um, see any of your information about adopters or your financial information. They can help even just like running errands around town. Like people were donating a bunch of things for silent auction. That's a great easy job for an intern to go collect those things for you and just make sure you set them up for success by giving them um, some key talking points like thank you so much for this donation. Um, we hope to see you at the event, like make sure that they're prepared to speak on behalf of your organization. Um, but you can definitely pick interns up for whatever you need help with. It does not need to be a regular gig at all. Um, yes, you'll have the PowerPoint sent to you. Let me see. Um, what is the process for making a business partnership on a, a campaign? Do you just send a formal letter? Yeah, so for the business partnership program, we have, yeah, we have like a one sheet of information and then it, we created just like a really small <laughs> contract. Like it was very short. It was just like, yeah, we commit to um, donating X amount of dollars in exchange for having an event at our place of business or whatever works for your organization um, that we just had them sign because it has happened before in the past where we agree to this and um, don't ever actually see the donation dollars. So I would recommend some sort of um, binding agreement, even if it's just something really easy that just makes them feel a little bit more accountable if nothing else. Um, what are other ways to build your email list on your website? Definitely have a spot there um, for people to pop their email address into to add to your email list. Anytime someone comes to an event, um, gather their email addresses. There's a lot of opportunities usually here in Missoula and elsewhere for like pint nights um, around town. So we have like a million breweries here and they'll do like uh, $2 from every beer on Tuesday night are donated to this organization. And that's great and a fun way to engage with the community. And usually you're allowed to go set up a table. So set up a table and just pop out an email list for people to sign up in that way. Um, pretty much anytime you're in the community, just have an option for people to write down their email address um, and have fun and other engaging things on your table as well. Um, let's see. Canva, it's free. <laughs> yes, it is free, it's great. Um, how do you get the press releases out? Do you email it to the news organizations? Yes, um, every organization, at least in town, has an email address that's like news at kpax.com or like info at KECI or 
you'll find them all on their website and then just save them into a folder um, and just blanket like BCC them out and just send out one pre press release to everyone. And it usually just in the subject line, just write um, humane society upcoming event or something, you know, feel good story. And then attach your press release and the copy, keep it really short because they're really busy and just say like, hey, from the Humane Society here, we have this really great thing going on. Check out the press release attached. Like keep your copy and your email really short because they're really busy. Um, let's see. Hi, Mary. <laughs> um, yeah, so for marketing during the pandemic, very challenging, something we've been really focusing on a lot at Pantler Group. As I kind of mentioned earlier, connecting with people right now is really important and people feeling really comfortable in your brand. Um, and that your brand has good values, which as a nonprofit, I'm sure it does. That's a great way to, um, over social media is a great way to express that to people and to really engage with people. So um, people are spending a lot of time on their phones right now, <laughs> spending a lot of time online right now, and just being there and listening to people, um, listening to their complaints, sending customer surveys even, um, or donor surveys or volunteer surveys. Um, seeing where people are at, trying to give them opportunities um, to be involved, even if they're not necessarily allowed in your building. Um, and just really trying to stay connected in this time because it's easy to be like, well, our doors are closed right now. So unfortunately, um, like we don't need your help. And that just feels kind of bad, especially when people want a, a feel good way to be involved. So I recommend um, staying connected and trying to come up with some fun things to keep people engaged, um, especially right now. Okay, I'm gonna look for one more question probably. What have we done to promote engagement? So that's a great question. Um, especially at Pentler Group, we don't like to measure impressions. Like impressions are how many people are seeing your content. And that's important. You want as many eyes on it as possible. But what is more important is engagement. And what's even more important than engagement is your third metric. So for example, if a post was like, please come sign our petition, we look at impressions, don't really care about it as much. Engagement, that's great, but how many people actually sign our petition is what's most important. So to promote engagement and things like that, we like to ask questions in our copy so that people might um, comment some stuff and start a conversation in the comments. Um, or we like to use shareable content um, so that people are engaging in that way. Um, and just really trying to encourage conversation on your page so that people are spending time there and really thinking about your organization um, is a great way to get people involved. And then posting just creative copy that's like, here's a picture of a puppy um, to cheer up your Monday, share this post to cheer up your timeline today or something, or like, like this picture if you are having a bad Monday morning or you know something along those lines that just gives like a very small call to action. Um, it's always helpful <laughs> to boost your engagement. Um, is it possible we can get a copy of that formal business partnership sheet? I will look for it, yes. Um, the only barrier would be if I can't find it. So I will look for it. And if I find it, I'll send it to Eli to get out to everybody. So um, I will try to look for it in my depths of my Google Drive. Um, do you have an example of how you would reach out to a business? Do you ask for money up front? Yes and no. Like I think um, when reaching out to a business, sometimes it's just a, a total cold call situation where you might just send mail to them. If you don't hear back from them, you might send an email or you might follow up with a phone call. Um, and I would recommend not being afraid to be persistent or... Um, just be confident and be bold because your organization is offering a lot to this business. Um, it's not just a one-way street. Like them giving you money is not the biggest part of the partnership. You're equal partners and something like that. So really be confident um, and approach them in a way that you're offering something to them as well, because you really are. And definitely you don't have to ask for money up front. I would probably start out with like, we have this idea. We think we would be a great fit together and then kind of slip it in there that it requires a donation, but definitely make sure it's really clear that you are requiring a donation and let them know exactly what that money goes towards. Like if we are off site somewhere doing an event at your place of work, we still have to have staff on site. So we're pretty much paying double wages at that time. So your donation goes to covering our resources for this event. 
um, just be really clear in that way. Um, and the time, and it, it covers the time that it takes to promote the event and to um, market it. Great questions. I think that's probably all of my time. <laughs> You're welcome. Yes, thank you again, McKenna. I think you did a really great presentation. We had some awesome questions here. Um, I, I'm, if you don't mind, I can maybe share out your information after this call as well, just so people have other follow-ups. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, we got we have Nolan saying he has one more <laughs> quick question. If you're all right with hanging around, yeah, I don't think yeah. there's any hey, issue. So I just was curious because um, I've uh, like had a speaker when I was in college. I did like PR and marketing stuff, and I had a speaker come in who really did not stop talking about how she didn't like her job, but she was like oh. the social media lady for our college and she would get a bunch of negative comments on their social media posts especially because it's a college so a lot of students were lashing out at at the college but mm -hmm. do you have any like uh I don't I don't really like do you have any like solutions or anything to like help deter negative comments or yeah um I would say that being involved in social media all the time can be really draining. Um, and there is a such thing as compassion fatigue when you're working in nonprofits. So just first of all, like that's something to really be aware of and make sure you're still really enjoying what you're doing and take the necessary steps to um, ensure your mental health as well. But as far as negative comments, there's always going to be negative comments on anything. Like people love to complain on Facebook. Um, I would just recommend I've been, I personally have been really worked up by comments that have like really irked me about specific things about the organization. And it's really important to like take a step back and take an hour or two hours to like really clear your mind and put together a really thoughtful response. Um, be positive in your reply. Like, thank you so much for this feedback. Um, this is actually what we're doing that might, you know, kind of differ from what they're commenting or just be really positive about the work you're doing in all of your replies. And odds are high that people are going to um, see those comments and see your positive reply, and they're going to know probably that um, that people are just kind of looking um, to start <laughs> drama on Facebook as per usual. So I'd say just be really thoughtful and intentional with your responses. Take some time to think about it and cool off. Um, but re I would respond to all of them uh, just with positive things that your organization is doing. Cool. Thank you. Yeah, absolutely. Um, enjoyed it. Thank you. <laughs> it looks like I saw one more question come through. Um, newsletters, do you write them and send them out on a regular basis? Yes. Um, I would say figure out a cadence that works really for your organization. Like if you don't have enough news to share weekly and you feel like you're sending a weekly email and it's just getting really stale and you don't have a lot of new content, change it up to monthly. Um, but I would only send newsletters if you really think you have relevant information to share. Um, so maybe it's monthly and you have a bunch of news from last month and a bunch of upcoming events for this month, then that's great. Um, and it's really easy to do in MailChimp or in Constant Contact to create a template and just keep duplicating it each time and popping in new information so it's not too time consuming. 